We are at Southwest Audio Fest 2025. I'm Ron Resnick. If you enjoy this interview, please kindly click like and subscribe to my What's Best Forum YouTube channel. I am meeting for the first time Alberto Guerra, founder and designer at AGD Productions. Great to meet you. Great to meet you, Ron. We're going to learn about Alberto's unique Ganfet electronics. What is the origin of the Ganfet device? Well, uh, the origin is actually uh, back many decades ago. But the uh, moment of commercial event actually happened not too many years ago when finally the price of this type of component uh, got to a point that could be used in normal, regular application and not only in very uh, sophisticated defense or high frequency application. And um, actually the pioneer of this uh, technology was a company that doesn't exist anymore, was acquired by different one um, international rectifier where uh, we have developed this technology as a first uh, ever for commercial application. Why would you use a GAN device rather than a traditional silicon transistor device yeah. for amplification purposes? Well, actually, because the gallium tri semiconductor uh, is a much, much better uh, semiconductor uh, than uh, silicon. It helps to make uh, uh, MOSFETs that are much more efficient, faster, and therefore can actually solve thanks to the uh, characteristics they have, all the problems that uh, have been affecting uh, power application, and also specifically audio application, when using silicon. So it's a, it's a better component, it's a faster component, it's a more uh, ideal component for switching application, which is the base of our Class D uh, product here. Can this type of transistor form the basis of a Class A or Class AB absolutely, typology as well? Absolutely not, absolutely mm -hmm. not. Uh, class A, Class AB are linear uh, mm -hmm. design and they have to utilize components, either you know, tubes eventually for uh, the, you know, the very old design or uh, silicon based, um, uh, utilizing this characteristic of components uh, in the linear region of, uh, of the component itself. The Class D are switching topology, so in reality they don't have to use the application uh, into the linear mode of the device because in fact the device doesn't work in uh, absolutely in a linear region. They work in, uh, in switching mode. Why do you show the device in the form of a traditional valve? Well, that's a, that's a very good question. And, and um, uh, of course, as you understand, since we've been in this uh, uh, you know, adventure for uh, several years, uh, I've been asked that question many, many, many times. It's a combination of two uh, fundamental uh, reasons. One um, was uh, definitely the, uh, the possibility to integrate something in a very small uh, case. The other one was more a psychological uh, reason. When I started this business uh, now a few years back, we had of course the problem how to present the uh, advantage of this device into a form that was going to be accepted by um, the audiophiles. And uh, at the time, the, the, the fundamental point was if we had brought into the market a classic black box uh, with a label Class D with GAN, uh, I would probably have no people walking in the room and listening to it, just because the, the name of Class D that was always associated to uh, something not necessarily sounding well, and definitely not for IN audio. So um, the reason was that we had to present the device, uh, the product, in a form that was attractive from the point of view of the customer to have to reinforce basically a, a positive reaction. Um, and eventually, you know, of course, uh, evolving into a more uh, positive uh, impression by listening to it and then after that to uh, release uh, the secret that actually this is not uh, a trier or a panther but it's actually a solid state amplifier in a glass tube. So there's no vacuum in there? Of course, the vacuum typically is, is no, no, we don't need that. The okay. vacuum is needed uh, for uh, filament in order to avoid this. Right. To, you know, so it's really just to attract attention to the is to innovative avoid product. avoid the reaction, mm -hmm. uh, the bias of uh, something that was going to be uh, negative instead. Mm -hmm. Now we transform that uh, first impression into a positive impression, reinforcing it with the quality of the sound. And eventually with uh, uh, the uh, you know, serendipity moment of discovery, Wow, it's not a, a tube, it's actually a, a solid state amplifier. But there is another reason, and I gave you only the first one. The other reason is because um, the Gallium Nitride is actually um, in its infancy from the technology standpoint compared to the many decades of evolution of silicon. So, in time, uh, we will have available product and semiconductor that could be. Uh, again, could be much better than what we use today, maybe in a few years. So having the possibility to upgrade and simply you know, eliminate 
uh, the reason to open something and, and swap stuff. We have this easy way of uh, plug and unplug a simple, you know, isolated mm -hmm. glass tube. And that's what we actually offer. We already have a third um, revision of this, uh, MK3, which is an improvement from the, uh, the original one we introduced five years ago. And there's no detrimental sonic effect to having to go through the uh, prongs on the so tube socket? Of course not. Mm -hmm. You just simply uh, observe how many wires and, and meters of connection and connector and cables there are in a regular, you know, monoblock of, uh, you know, mongoose stuff that we sometimes see around here uh, compared to the few centimeters that are available here. Not to mention that this socket that you're referring to as a uh, you know, potential critical one has been used for the past, uh, I would say, 100 years. Mm -hmm. It's an octal, mm -hmm. you know, socket. More or less the same age of the, uh, uh, you know, socket used for lamps. Even today when we have LED lamps, we still use the same socket, right? has been uh, around for yeah. uh, a lot of time. So if that had been a problem, it would have been already uh, discontinued. And, and what, right. do you, what do you hear when you listen to your gallium nitride class D amplifiers versus silicon, traditional silicon transistor oh, class D amplifiers? I, I, what differences in sound do you hear? You should ask that to my customer. I never, ever comment on uh, somebody else's uh, products. So the answer is uh, I prefer mine, but mm -hmm. that's uh, you know, simply because I designed this product. Is there something about the uh, sound of the gallium nitride device that you prefer over the traditional semiconductors? Uh, the, the gallium nitride per se has no sound. Mm -hmm. The traditional semiconductor has no sound. Mm -hmm. What makes the sound is the way you implement them in the layout, in the topology, in the component that you use. So as long as you understand what to have the, the correct layout and, and design and uh, all the other parameters needed to make an amplifier, the amplifier shouldn't have a sound. What you, when uh, an amplifier has a sound, it means that uh, there is a problem. Amplifier well, all amplifiers have a sound. We, we describe, we attribute different sure. sonic attributes to different types and, of amplifiers. And again, uh, I think that my design are the closest things to mm -hmm. a wire with a gain that mm -hmm. you should have. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the sound is what is physically in the signal. Well, how does the fact that it's made out of gallium nitride improve the ultimate result? Why is that beneficial to the circuit? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, the reason is, is fundamentally because in a switching amplifier, um, uh, the transition of the device is not perfect per se. It's not a perfect square wave as you can uh, possibly draw on a piece of paper. It has some additional um, imperfection related to the uh, parasitics uh, of the device itself or the way it is implemented in the layout. By not taking care into these uh, you know, elements, which are of course more even related to very, very high frequency radio frequency application rather than audio uh, frequency, then you eliminate from the um, content of the uh, signal transferred to the output all those artifacts related to those uh, additional uh, imperfection created by a slower switching or a distortion of the uh, rise time and, and, and fall time. Have you ever considered a hybrid device, perhaps using your uh, gallium nitride uh, device as the output stage with a tube input stage of an amplifier? No, uh, absolutely not, because it's a counterintuitive to add a very slow uh, element uh, in front of a very fast device. I know that people like things like that, and it's, I, I leave that to the decision of the customer to add their own preamplifier or whatever. But from the design point of view, it doesn't make any sense. It would like to be having an extremely uh, powerful and fast uh, car and driving it at on the first and second gear all the time and doesn't make any sense. It will bring you to from point A to point B, but will not give you certainly the performance of a fast and a powerful, you know, car. What speakers do you use personally at home? Well, I am a, a fanatic, uh, and again, it's all about taste, of, course. of the uh, Magni Planner. Mm, uh, mm -hmm. so I have the Magni 1.7, mm -hmm. and uh, I always found the sound of those uh, speakers uh, absolutely amazing. Which amplifier of yours do you use on the 1.7s? Any of them. Um, I've been using the Audion, I've been using the Grammy Vace, I've been using the new Duet uh, or the Temple. You know, the ability of, a, of this device is to drive any sort of speaker is almost incredible because uh, I have a plenty of current available to drive even the most inefficient mm -hmm. system. I have customers that have the Scintilla, one on, uh, that mm -hmm. use my, my system. So, 
Which is, what is the output of the solo mono amplifier? Uh, the solo uh, is actually 600 watt, mm -hmm. and it's not <laughs> fun enough, we have to move it. We have to lend it to a friend of us, we had a problem with um, a very demanding uh, electrostatic speaker, you know, I cannot say the name, but very, very large one. Uh, we had happened to melt uh, their amplifier it was using, and ah. so it's a very bad situation when you're in a, in a, in a show. And you don't have the amp. So we just lend the, the 600 watt. You can go, and, uh, I think it's that room 1201. Mm -hmm. They were trying that. What's the next new product we should expect from AGD? Well, number one, we introduced many uh, design and we have actually introduced several improvements. The next design uh, I have in mind something related to um, a more integrated solution. Mm -hmm. um, but typically, we don't uh, release any idea ahead of time. I mean, when we are ready to uh, actually make it in a, in, a, in a commercial way. Okay, Alberto. Thank you very oh, much. Great, great to meet you. Thank Have you. a great show. Thank you. It for the usual fee. Plus expenses. Confidential information. It's in a diary. This is my investigation. The things you do